Today on the DML News Podcast, Donald Trump dominating in polls despite all that the left is trying to do to him in New York and around the country. Also, Trump meets with DeSantis. What's that all about? We're going to take you back to the border. There's some crazy things going on, and we've got to show it all to you. And then, of course, the whole pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas thing goes on steroids. We've got video, we've got stories, and it's all unfiltered. Dennis Michael Lynch gives you his word, and he will never let you down. He will always fight for America. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and I thank you for joining me today. Across from me is my son, Denny. Behind the controls is my son, Ryan. We've got a good show for you today. We're going to dive right into it. But before I do that, let me tell you, dmlcbd.com slash BOGO, B-O-G-O, the B -O, buy one, get one free. I think there's a couple of products Ashley, my daughter, has up there today for BOGO today and tomorrow. Then it's over. This was the, uh, the run over. Uh, we always reserve a little bit of product in case we... Uh, oversell or boxes get lost, et cetera, so forth. We just had a big, huge BOGO going back weeks ago. So any product that we had saved to the side is now also going out BOGO. This day and tomorrow are the last days for it. 1600 Premier Tincture, uh, uh, the uh, hand and foot cream, and the minis for the Miracle Me body oil. There's a bunch of stuff there. You can see which which products are available at dmlcbd.com slash BOGO, B-O-G-O. You want to improve the skin. You want to improve your, your uh, boost your immune system. So many different aspects of pain and suffering that leaves once you start rubbing this stuff on or you start taking it. And so many people swear by DML CBD, and that's because we are world class in what we offer. Everything's tested. Everything's safe. You're good to go. So with that being said, Dennis, let's jump into, uh, I guess maybe we should start it with the video. I, my, my CBD can't help Joe Biden feel better about himself. We have a poll that is, uh, I think CNN put it out, right? I mean, the results of it, and it just shows that Trump is dominating. Should we not play it? Let's play it. Let's play the video. Our new poll, which was conducted by SSRS, finds Trump is leading Biden, who has ample work to do with his base and with independent voters who are breaking to his GOP rival. In a head-to-head -head race, 49% of voters say they'd pick Trump for president, compared to 43% for Biden. That's a nine-point Trump advantage with independent voters. And add in third-party candidates, and Trump's lead jumps even more. He has 42% to Biden's 33%, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. gets 16% of the vote. Our poll also underscores the challenges of incumbency, and that voters, four years later, have a better view of Trump's presidency compared to Biden's. 55% say Trump's time in office was a success, with only 39% saying the same about Biden's presidency. Yeah, so I mean, it was posted by uh, CNN. It was actually conducted by SSRS. I guess they do... Um, you know, different election kind of style pollings uh, and New York Post covered it. So nearly two thirds of registered voters consider Joe Biden's presidency to be a failure so far, <laughs> with Donald Trump continuing to hold a comfortable lead in the race for the White House. Um, look, it goes more into just about how you can see the percentages start to switch in terms of favorability towards who they want to elect, but also how presidencies are now being viewed. So people... I think now with the comparison of Biden being here for four years are comparing, okay, how am I today compared to how was I under Trump's four years? And by and large, a lot of them are seeing they were definitely more successful, more money in their pocket. Uh, I feel like just more stability within the nation. And we also didn't have to worry about going to war in like three different regions of the world. Oh, absolutely. Look, Joe Biden has been an epic failure. Um, I don't, I still don't believe in what I saw take place in 2020. I don't, nobody has ever been able to come up to me and explain 81 million votes. I, I can go up to, I mean, I, my God, I do what I do. I, I don't know other than one person in my entire life that cast a vote for Joe Biden. Not more than one person. That's all. I just know one. 
She lives in North Carolina. You know who I'm talking about. Other than that, nobody. I, I, I can't believe with all the things that we are lied to about that we're supposed to just sit here and just ignore some of the testimonies we've seen over the course of time. And I'm hoping that Lara Trump and all those people who are now over at the RNC, Michael Watley, Michael Watley are taking this very seriously. And this is the number one thing. I mean, I don't need to know what they're doing. I don't need to know how they're doing it. It's probably better off that we don't. So this way the Democrats won't know. But however, we are going to protect ourselves against this kind of crap happening again. I want to play a video. I don't know when this is from. I, I, I don't know when this is from. This just came across my desk. It's a testimony given about voting in Michigan during the 2020 election, Dennis, mm -hmm. where this guy claims that 17,327 dead people voted. Let's play that video, Ryan. In a nutshell, we've, we found several other things using uh, open source data. Um, there is a, uh, a gentleman named Eric Lutzen, and um, he has matched up a list. He started looking at voters above the age of 80 that were um, registered for voting and, and did vote on, uh, in, in Michigan. And 17,327 uh, Michigan voters also had a corresponding obituary. And uh, I didn't print that whole thing out, but I can give you that uh, website for the tabular data. Um, and it's uh, about 350 pages or so. So in the, uh, the essence of time, I'll uh, close it out. We'd be happy to, uh, to chat to if, if there's any other specific information that I can provide to you about our findings. Sure, uh, thank you. Yeah, so even more details there. Um, so as you said, that 17,000 number, but this is just Michigan alone for 2020. Uh, over 100,000 ballot applications falsified. Three, after, three hours after polls closed, um, there was uh, suspicious load-ups of different votes into the back of cars. And then 83 counties failed to certify Dominion machines. So there's just kind of a whole bullet point list of how things weren't adding up for a lot of these states. I know Georgia had plenty. Uh, look, and Arizona, I told you we talked about this last week. Karen Fan, Senator Karen Fan, who led the whole thing. She was on this podcast, I believe it was two years ago. And I remember just sitting there with my mouth open, all the things that she found out, all the things that they learned, then handed that information over to the state of Arizona, who absolutely did nothing about it. To this day, they still, as far as I know, um, never got the server logs that they asked for. And yet we are told every single time from the lying media, the paid for media, the liberal leaning, always in Biden and Obama's pocket media, these are the same people who told us that there was Russia collusion mm -hmm. and a authentic steel dossier, which all turned out to be bogus and fake. New York Times gets pulled surprised for it, never hands it back for all their reporting on something that was fake, right? We were told that the uh, acts in Benghazi that left four Americans dead was all because of a Muslim video on YouTube, which was complete lies. Fast and furious, we had our own government on the Barack Obama running guns to the cartels and then those guns used to kill people including a border patrol agent right we lied about that we were told that if you want to keep your doctor you could keep your doctor through obamacare even though obama knew that it was not true okay it was designed not to be like that i mean the list here of things that i mean you were told that if you got the good old little shot in your arm you were not going to get sick oh well, wait you won't go to the hospital oh well, wait you won't die all that turned out to be a big lie we were told that gang of function, gain of function was not paid for by Anthony Fauci and the United States government. We found out that was a lie. Every single time we are told something and it's emphasized, this is the truth, it turns out to be an absolute lie. Why should we believe anything different this time? Now, I mean, I don't want to go back and uh, uh, debate something that has been debated now for nearly four years about what happened back in that November in 2020. But it just doesn't add up. And the fact that they just keep on pushing, this is the big lie. Trump tells the big lie, the big lie, the big lie. What, what? 
Who said, does anybody have anything to say about that video, about what that man found, 17,000 dead people, or what you just brought out, or any of the other different things that just don't equal out, that don't seem right? Doesn't anybody care about hearing this kind of stuff? And so when we look at these polls right now, I, I, I get concerned that the left is sitting there on the other side and saying, all right, our strategy of trying to win this election is by taking their number one guy and throwing him in jail. They're seeing it's backfiring on them. And we might as well dive into this now. Uh, uh, this weekend, I was sitting, I was doing something, I can't remember, and all of a sudden over my phone, doot, and all of a sudden it's a breaking news on the DML News app about Ron DeSantis meeting with Donald J. Trump. I love that. What about you? Same here. Yes, they actually met in Miami, um, closed door meeting, and it seems like it's an attempt to according to the New York Post here, patch up their strained relationship. And insiders also told the Post that DeSantis is expected to raise money uh, for Trump on top of campaigning for him, uh, obviously since he has suspended his own presidential uh, campaign. This could be really good because, I mean, I, as much as I want DeSantis you know, being our governor, uh, if Trump is in the precarious position here of he's got all these court battles can only do another four years if he is elected. Maybe he could probably just patch the relationship, set DeSantis up in a nice VP role, and then after Trump does his four years, DeSantis maybe can just go run for actual president again and take another four to eight years with him. Well, I'll tell you, you know, there's a, I've thought about this a great amount because this program has been pro-Trump, pro-DeSantis, and we have said multiple times, Ryan has chimed in and said it, that, man, wouldn't it be great if these two can just mend the fences and come together because it would be a powerful Batman and Robin duo. And finally, it looks like that's happening. Now, the he said, she said BS started already with this. Uh, the Trump's campaign said, well, just want to be clear that it was DeSantis who reached out to us. All right, whatever. I, I'll give DeSantis the big, the, the big man in the room award for that. Not easy to do, especially when somebody has been calling you desanctimonious for the last nine months and turning all of his people into believing that the greatest governor we've ever had in the United States of America, the greatest conservative governor, is somehow tied to Soros and some kind of you know horrible human being which just isn't the truth. If you live in Florida and you look at what Ron DeSantis does for this state, it is simply incredible. So now with the BS game, game and ship stopping, because that's, look, Trump's brilliant in the way that he wins. He, he takes his opponent. He doesn't let them gain any strength or any momentum. He knocks them down, buries them. And then after he buries them, he picks them back up from the dead. That is basically the way that, that Trump handles it. And listen, it creates a winning situation for him, so God bless him. But let's never forget that DeSantis won this state in the last election by 20 points, and he did not have the endorsement of Trump. But what he did was he made sure that he had people in place to, sh to say, Mr. Governor, I can tell you this is a secure election. And because it was secure, we have our guy still being the governor. Now, with that in mind, you take a look at what, what's in it for Trump. Trump knows that he's got too many people on the right who don't want him uh, and said, well, DeSantis is the better choice. Let's go with that. Trump says, hey, I, I, I need every vote I can get. So I'll take him in. Also, let's not, let's not make a mistake here. Ron DeSantis is a success when it comes to running his state. There's a lot of success here. So I think for, for Trump having another person who has the ability to go out and raise a lot of money like DeSantis does is good to have in your camp. For DeSantis, and this is what I thought a lot about, DeSantis is already looking to 2028. He's already looking to 2028. He's got nothing left to run for, right? He's got two more years as governor here. But when Trump is done, if he wins and he's got the White House, DeSantis is going to want to run. He knows he's going to have to have the support of the Trump MAGA movement. And what better way to do that right now than to show that you're willing to fight for your team. And that is a smart, smart move on DeSantis's point uh, of part. He will, he will take those people back into his camp. Now with the whole VP thing, 
Um, you know, Christy Noem over the weekend did the most stupid thing ever. She wrote a book admitting that she killed her dog, even if she did. And even if it was the, the right thing to do, which I don't know whether it was or not, I'm not in the situation. It's the stupidest thing you could possibly do in writing that in your book, which leaves me to say she's not a very smart person when it comes to making decisions of that nature. And I'm not sure whether or not I'd really still want to support her being the vice president uh, nomination uh, choice. Maybe we should go over if we're going to take a woman over to Sanders Huckabee, but Huckabee Sanders, whatever. Uh, but DeSantis, if he is not the VP choice, he would be a great attorney general because just as important as, look, if you ask me what's more important, vice presidency or attorney general, I'm going to tell you attorney general. Because what has happened in this country, and we're going to get over a lot of it here at the tail part of the show about this whole Palestine crap. You have to have an, a, 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 an impressive attorney general. And I think that DeSantis, which by the way, he's a lawyer, um, he would be phenomenal in that position. So maybe what DeSantis is doing is also positioning himself, because remember, there's going to be a gap between 2028 and 2026 when his term ends. So could very well be that DeSantis is trying to position himself for something like an attorney general position. I agree. And look, whether it's VP, AG, um, I think he should have some kind of involvement in that administration if Trump is elected. Uh, he just He's done a lot of good for Florida, and they might be a little bit at strained uh, different points right now in their relationship. But if this is now amending, you know, there, there could be some very good opportunity here. And I think Trump recognizes that having DeSantis on his team only helps him instead of isolating those that may not be as pro-Trump. Absolutely. Both men would equally be as good as the other uh, when it comes to immigration. And I think that if everybody was to just stop and look at the country right now and say, what is the biggest problem, both short term and long term, they would pick immigration, economy, uh, you know, inflation, things of that nature. That's cyclical. That's going to come back around or whatever. But what's happening at the border right now is completely reshaping our entire nation, not just right now, but for decades and decades and decades to come. Let's talk about the fireman in New York who just died and how it is that the story is being tied back to the migrant crisis. Yeah, so an FDNY firefighter has died of a heart attack just months after he was fired as part of the city's efforts to free up funds for its migrant crisis, <laughs> leaving his grieving widow and kids struggling to keep a roof over their heads. Derek Floyd, who was 36, suffered cardiac arrest and passed away April 15th, four months after the city gave him the boot as part of a larger effort to pare down staff and pay for housing and services for the tens of thousands of migrants flooding the Big Apple. Floyd was one of about 10 fire department employees who had been on long-term duty, either injured on the job and given office work or out sick for an extended period and fired weeks before Christmas. Think about that for a second. You know, the he was also a U.S. Marines veteran who had served three tours in the Middle East. How horrifying is this? So 36-year-old man signs up to be a fireman after he signs up to be a Marine. Obviously, this is a man who was dedicating his life to helping and saving others. And the fact that we would just rid of somebody like him so we can free up some money to give migrants who have no right to be here in this, in this country so we could give them food, shelter, and everything else. This is the epitome of disgusting. This is the epitome of why it is that we just played a video that shows that Joe Biden doesn't stand a snowball's chance in hell come this election. People are tired of this. They are really tired of it. In fact, don't you have, there, there, was, there was a leaked audio. It, we're not going to play it because it's a little too hard to hear. But there's a leaked audio of the governor of New Mexico, who's a liberal complaining about Joe Biden 
and the Department of Homeland Security about what they are and are not doing to protect the borders. What, what, yeah, what was that the, about? Yeah, in the audio, she actually even pinpoints at Mayorkas, and uh, she says like that whether it's political or Washington Post or any of the major uh, news organizations, they're all coming after her because she quite literally has like no border patrol by her sector. Mm. Um, or virtually is it's basically ghost land. And she said in the audio that she's just frustrated and she kind of has a bone to pick with Mayorkas, as I think every governor on the border should at this point. But yeah, it was leaked audio. It'd be nice if maybe she could just make a formal statement and speak out against her party. But yeah, um, but that's asking too much, right? Meanwhile, we'll take you, uh, you know, back back to New York for a second. Dennis, tell them, I mean, Ryan can maybe toss up the, the, the uh, picture of the hotel. A hotel has now basically been converted into a migrant shelter. Yeah, so a, a hotel in one of New York uh, City's trendiest neighborhoods has been quietly converted into emergency housing for migrants for the past several months. Uh, Mayor Adams' administration has recently awarded a $12.3 million emergency contract to a not-for-profit social service provider to run a city sanctuary facility for families with children at 235 Meeker Avenue in Williamsburg, the address of the Hotel Le Jolie. The Department of Homeless, uh, Homeless Services issued the contract to the Brooklyn-based St. Paul's Incorporated to manage the facility. And yeah, if you see the picture of it, I mean, it's a nice hotel. I mean, Williamsburg is a, actually a pretty decent area within, within New York there, but it has now been converted into a shelter for migrant families. How lovely is that? And then on top of that, if you want to go to Logan Airport, here's another photograph, Ryan, if you could just toss it up. Logan Airport, you go to Logan Airport, uh, look what you're getting. You're getting migrants all over the floor, yeah. all over. that. They're now using our airports as their place of rest and their place of where they're going to go to the bathroom and wash their face and brush their teeth. How disgusting. Can you imagine having to go for a flight? You're going to walk into the bathroom and you got guys there from Guatemala, right? And they're sitting there, blah, 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 and they're brushing their teeth and they're using it as a, 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 as a home. I mean, what is going on here? Yeah, I mean, look, you got to now worry about jumping on the plane and hoping everything's going to be okay because we know Boeing's a mess. Yep. And then you got to worry about the landing because all of these major uh, American airports have been converted into migrant centers. It's, Absolutely. It's, so flying in the U.S. Is, has become a quite literal nightmare. We so, thought it was bad before, but it's worse than ever. So now let's stay in Massachusetts for a second and really turn your stomach. Disgusting. House Democrats reject giving Massachusetts homeless veterans preference over migrants in shelter system. Amendment 698, homeless veterans prioritization for shelter assistance was rejected on a 27 to 129 roll call, uh, roll, roll call vote. In a few words, uh, Massachusetts Democrats are telling you that illegals take priority over veterans. Play the video. What about the military folks that are getting out of the military and they have to go through all the lines to start all over again, even though they have credentials? So my question, pretty simple, why would we fast track them and we won't do it for our military? They have the advantage of speaking the language most of our military folks. So these folks that we're really working on may not have that. So it's going to be really difficult for them to say, yes, I used to be an uh, electrician in my country. I'm just using mine, which is Somalia. But that might not really fall into our laws that we have in this country. First of all, who elected this woman from Somalia, another Somalian, right? With, you notice with, how she says my country. My it's country. Always, yeah, there's always allegiance to where they came from, never to where they're going. Right. So so us. not only do we have the Somalian over here, we don't need her. Then she's actually somebody votes her in because you want to know what it is. I'll tell you what it is. They take the Somalians, they load them into one demographic area, one geographic area. So the, 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 the demographic is all Somalian. They have a district. And then what happens? That's how, that's how you get power. That's how you switch power. You redistrict things. So this way, all the Somalians are voting for Ilan Omar or this broad here. And then she's going to sit there and say, oh, no, we're dealing with the migrants because they have a difficult issue because they don't speak English. And your person, your veteran who, you know, laid down 
God knows how much of his life, as far as I'm concerned, to go over to wherever he was to fight for this country. He knows how to speak English, so he's going to go second place. How did we get here? How did we get here? This is absolute insanity. It is insanity. The, this is why, you know, when we just did a poll, Democrats, 43% of them said they're, they're totally in for mass deportation. Well, guess what, Democrats? You're the ones who caused this damn problem. You're the one through your votes who caused this damn problem. You're the ones who, why it is, I got veterans sleeping. I mean, go to California. I mean, you know, he just tried to come up with a new coin. Gavin Newsom came up with a new coin, new coin design for uh, some kind of coin for California. You know what people did? They sent them back uh, what they thought would be a good coin for California. And it was tense. Yeah. Tense. United States of tense. Watch it on Amazon. That was our movie that we made about the homeless crisis. The Democrats are destroying this country, and we're just letting it happen. I mean, look at everything, Dennis. Look at the border and the unruliness of the border. Everybody's complaining about it, but nobody's doing a damn thing. Why hasn't he shut it down? Oh, he's, uh, he's, uh, Biden is uh, uh, thinking about maybe putting in an executive order. What's there to think about? What, what, what's the delay? Siri, I don't, I don't understand that rhetoric at all. Like, yeah. What if the... Oh, yeah, we're, we're in the process of uh, debating it, thinking it over, looking at all options. What's... Yeah. What? Well, 20,000 people per day come on in through the border bringing God knows everything. Drugs, weapons, drugs, terrorism, you name it. Then you go and you take a look at what we're doing here with, with, with our homeless people and everybody else. Yeah, pu putting Americans to the curb and putting migrants fr front and center. It makes absolutely no sense. Then you got people with videos like we just showed about 17,000 people who have obituaries actually voting. Does this not, where's the, does nobody have a red flag over this? Does nobody sit there and say, my God, we're losing our country, but inch by inch, moment by moment. But there's no better example of this than what's happening, not only now in college campuses from around the, the country, but also happening right in the middle of the street, right in the middle of the street. Now, here's the thing, Dennis. If you and I and Ryan go too deep into this conversation, when we're here on Facebook, when we're here on YouTube, when we're here on Apple Podcasts, we will get shut down. We will not get our spread. They will, they will, they will, freedom of speech, but no freedom of reach, right? And then we'll get a violation. It'll be a policy violation that it's bad this or bad that. Why? Because we're pointing out, we're shining a light on the travesties that are taking place in this country. My ass. So here's the thing. The only place where we can actually give people the true news of what's going on is if you actually go download the DML News app for free from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Download it. You go to tab five. You become a Team DML member. Team DML is where we put all of our videos, all of our video podcasts, all the things on video that we can show you what's going on in this country is on Team DML. No ads on Team DML. We don't let any of that Google crap onto our site. Nothing. You get live chat with people, thousands of people just like you. You get to watch every one of our shows, and we have plenty of them. And you get so many other perks. I'm not going to go into the list right now, but I am going to tell you, if you are on those platforms and you want to come over and watch the rest of the show, we need you. And so you could sign up. It's only a couple bucks a month. $2.50 is the lowest one you could go in there for. It's nothing. But it helps keep us in business and helps keep you informed because nobody's going to show you some of what we're going to show you right now. We have videos that are going to blow your freaking mind that are happening here in the United States, right? People getting beaten, beaten because they're carrying an American flag, beaten and then arrested because they're the ones with the American flag. They're getting their ass kicked by people who just came over here from another country, and they're the ones going to prison. But that said, we'll give you the first 30 seconds of that video, and then the rest of it is going over to Team DML with a whole other slew of videos that we're going to be showing you and talking about this very topic. But we are being infiltrated by those who want to see this country go to its knees, and it's being paid for by George Soros. It's being paid for by just absolute crazy people, crazy people who want to see Catholics and Christians and Jews. So you know what? That's as much as we can talk about it right now. So there we go. We're going to say goodbye to you. You can watch 30 seconds, and we're going to be back on the other side with Team DMO. Hey, don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me, My hands are up. Hands up. Don't 
shoot. Hands up, don't shoot. Hands up. Don't hurt me. I'm the American. I, I'm an American. Love me, man. Don't push him. Don't push me. Don't money push him. Don't push me. Please. I'm an American. The f man. I'm an American. Get the Dennis Michael Lynch podcast every day by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And download the DML News app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store for breaking news, merchandise, films, exclusive content, and Team DML.